I'm stressed out. Uh, I am stressed out. In fact, are, are we recording? Yes. Okay, then, uh, then I want to make a special request. Okay. You can kick me out if you like. Uh, but I Why would I do a... that? <laughs> because I, uh, I need to have a meltdown. I would like to have a meltdown right now on your show. You want to have a personal meltdown? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I've never heard anybody plan for a meltdown before. Well, I, 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 I've, I, I need to do this, and uh, I think this is the right opportunity. Okay. <clears throat> and I don't know uh, what I'm going to say. Okay. But I am definitely going to melt down. Okay. Uh, okay. So I am completely fed up. I have worked day and night. I work about 80 hours a week. I'm directing almost 40 research projects. Uh... I've been working really hard for maybe 45 years. And the last 12 years where I've turned my eye to Google and other tech companies have turned into, for me personally, a disaster. So before I started studying Google, I had published 15 books with major publishers. Since I've started studying Google and other companies... I can't publish anymore. Uh, I used to write for and actually work for mainstream news organizations and media organizations. I was editor-in-chief of Psychology Today for four years. I was an editor for Scientific American. I wrote for USA Today and U.S. News and World Report and Time Magazine. <laughs> but in 2019, after I testified before Congress, about some of my research on Google, uh, President Trump s tweeted to his whatever millions of gazillions of followers uh, basically some praise for my research. He, he got the details wrong. But then Hillary Clinton, whom I had always admired, chose to tweet back to her 80 million Twitter followers and she tweeted that my work had been completely debunked and was based on data from 21 undecided voters. I still have no idea where any of that came from. Probably someone from Google, because Google was her biggest supporter in 2016. And this was 20, 2019. And then that got picked up by, by, by this machine. I'm told it's called the Clinton machine. And the New York Times picked that up without fact-checking, and then a hundred other places did, and I got squashed like a bug, squashed. I had a flawless reputation as a researcher. My, my research reputation was gone. I was now a fraud, a fraud. Even though I've always published in peer-reviewed journals, which is really hard to do, and uh, there was nothing I could do about it. And all of a sudden, I found that I, the only places I could publish were in what I call right-wing conservative nutcase publications, where I've, where I've actually made friends over the years. I've made friends with them, but that's beside the point. I've, I've, I was crushed. And uh, not only that, I, I've been discovering things. I've made at least 10 major discoveries about new forms of influence that the internet has made possible. These are controlled almost entirely by a couple of big tech companies, affecting more than 5 billion people around the world every single day. And I've, I've discovered them, I've, I've, I've named them, I've quantified them, I've published randomized controlled studies to show how they work, published them in peer-reviewed journals, we just had an, another paper accepted uh, yesterday. And uh, what it, and I, I've built systems to do to them what they do to us and our kids. 
They surveil us and our kids 24 hours a day. Uh, Google alone does that more, over more than 200 different platforms, most of which no one's ever heard of. People have no idea the extent they're being monitored. They're being monitored when they're, if they have a Android phones, they're being monitored even when your phone is off. Even when the power is off, you're still being monitored. How do they do that? Well, because the, remember when we could take the batteries out? Yeah. And then at some point they soldered them in? Yeah. Because they soldered the batteries in, even when you turn the phone off, it's not off. It's easy to demonstrate. It's still transmitting. Or it'll transmit the moment the power comes back on. It's still collecting data. So what am I trying to say here? Then my, I, my wife was killed in a suspicious car accident. This was, this was also shortly after I testified before Congress in 2019. Right before she was killed, I did a private briefing for Ken Paxton, the AG of Texas, and other AGs at Stanford University. And one of those guys came out afterwards and he said, well, based on what you told us, Dr. Epstein, he said, I don't mean to scare you, but he said, I predict you're gonna be killed in some sort of accident in the next few months. So I told you this before yeah. when I was on before, and obviously I wasn't killed, but my, my, my beautiful wife was killed. And you know her vehicle was never inspected forensically, and then it disappeared from the impound lot. I was told it was sold to some junk company in Mexico. And uh, that is one of now six, six incidents, six, of violence against people who are associated with me 